أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون صدق الله العلي العظيم In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful all praise is due to our creator our cherisher our nourisher and our sustainer We bear witness there's none worthy of worship but Allah we bear witness, we believe in all the prophets who came in the great line of divine. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, is the final of all the emissaries of Allah. Mr. Elders, ulama, hufad, brothers and sisters, respected youth, students, the guests who have come from overseas, I greet you with the Islamic universal greeting of peace. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah be upon each and every one present here at this auspicious time of Jum'ah, on this special Friday, on this special day of the week, in this beautiful house of Allah, in this most beautiful city of the world. I say to you, may the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. We often tend to look at the world around us and wonder, in these challenging times, how could we make the world a better place? I believe that each conscientious person has two primary choices. And that is, one, to accept conditions as they are and to leave it as it is, or to accept the responsibility for improving both ourselves and as well as the world around us. The sage Ibrahim bin Adham, one of the most prominent of the early uh, righteous ascetics or Sufis, who lived about 170 years after the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's reported to have said, I always wanted to do something meaningful. When I was young, I wanted to change the world. I found it was difficult to change the world. So I thought I will change my community. When I found that to be difficult too, I began to focus on changing my town. I couldn't change the entire town. So I began to concentrate on my family. Eventually I found the only thing that I could really change effectively was myself. Now as an old man, he said, I realize if long ago I focused more on improving myself, I could have impacted on my family. I could have enhanced the neighborhood, which, have, which would have transformed the society perhaps and which may have influenced the nation and potentially changed the world. And if not, at least I would have been a better person. Change always begins with the self. So we know that the life of a believer, each and every believer, it revolves around iman and amal salihat Faith and the manifestation of that faith in good deeds. Therefore, these two concepts are so often paid off in the Quran very often they are paid in the Quran and by virtue of that of Iman and of faith and manifestation of faith in good deeds it ought to be a catalyst a believer ought to be a catalyst for good wherever they find themselves in any situation you see too often we have plans Revolving around changing the world around us, changing things, changing others, altering things, but really about improving our own selves. And this, as if we are oblivious of the Quranic directive, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Certainly Allah will not change the condition of any people unless and until they change themselves and what is within themselves. We cannot attain what we need by remaining where we are or where we have been and leaving things as they are. We must realize that where we are and in which direction we intend to be heading. 
We should make sure that we avoid the mentality of Christopher Columbus, Italian navigator and of course colonizer, who made four voyages across the Atlantic Ocean from Italy. He died after having traveled four times, he died believing that he reached the Far East, while actually he reached what is now known as America. So he didn't reach the Far East, he, reached, he didn't reach the Far East, he reached the West. So we have to avoid what we call this Christopher Columbus syndrome. That is, when he started, he did not know actually where he was going. He did not really know where he was when he got there. And when he returned, he did not exactly know where he had been. Be very careful of where we are and which direction we are going. And this begins by analyzing how we perceive the world around us. Because the way we perceive the world around us is a product of our thinking, and our thinking is a product of our beliefs, which are the products of our life experiences, which are constituted of those elements which most influence our hearts and our minds. So the feelings and beliefs and the thoughts that we harbor in our hearts, this colors our perception. And these perceptions influence our minds, our attitudes, and these attitudes mold our motives, and these motives dictate our action, and these actions eventually dominate our lives and determine who we are. So how we see the world around us and which judgments we make as we engage the world greatly determines the quality of life we live and the contribution that we make. So in navigating the road of life, each of us should have that mentality not to consider ourselves victims of what happens but rather as potential architects of making a difference, of pathways of making things happen. Don't let things happen, make things happen. Do not be the passenger of your life, be the pilot. You know, certainty of conviction, considered action, and an all conquering love. This is the armaments of the people of action and of faith. Learn to ride the wave of life with its ups and downs. There are moments of joy and tears. There are gains and losses, highs and lows, advances and setbacks, achievements and disappointments, happiness and sadness. But as we ride the roller coaster of life, resolve and be determined to perform without delay what needs to be performed. So during this crucial period in our history, it is imperative, it's imperative that each of us makes a personal statement with our lives, through our thoughts, through our words, and of course, through our actions. None of us have the luxury of being selfish, or being uncaring, or being indifferent. Because if we're not part of the solution, then through our apathy, we could be of those who are contributing to the problem. And be of those as a source of instrument of benefit, as the Rasul said about the believer, Allah uses you as an instrument for the benefit of humanity. So be part of the solution, not add to the problem. But this requires us to take care of our infrastructure, our personal infrastructure. We need to improve our lives and enhance our potential to have a positive impact on the world around us. If we want ourselves and those around us to live a happy and fulfilling life, it's very important to tend to our personal infrastructure, the body, the mind, the heart, and the soul. On the one hand, safeguard your physical well-being. It is easier said than done, but we know we should eat wisely, watch ourselves, our bodies, how we abuse it or use it, exercise regularly, avoid unnecessary or imprudent risks and stay away from all forms of haram, drugs and intoxicants which pollute the body. Because physical well-being is probably the first component that comes to mind when thinking about the well-being of people. That's why when you meet people, assalamu alaikum, how are you? you? Don't ask how's your car, how's your job? Just good. Courtesy in any part of the world, assalamu alaikum, kayfa haluk, kayfa haluk. You ask about their well-being. It's a universal norm. So, it's often the com component most neglected. It's the first thing we ask, uppermost in our mind, yet not really in our thought. 
Health is one of the blessings least appreciated until, of course, we lose it. And therefore, the Rasul sallallahu had it documented in the Sahih of Al-Bukhari, Imam Al-Bukhari said, نَعْمَتَانْ مَغْبُولٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ الصِّحَّةِ وَالْفَرَاقِ There are two blessings of Allah which human beings do not fully appreciate. Health and their free time. Furthermore, the Prophet reminded us about the value of these things we take for granted. And he said in a hadith documented both in Bukhari and by Ibn Majah, he said, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سِرِبِهِ مُعَافًا فِي جَسَدِهِ عِنْدَهُ قُوتَ يَوْمِ فَكَأَنَّمَا حِيزَتْ لَهُ الدُّنْيَا بِحَذَا فِيرِهَا Whoever finds himself secure in his home, enjoying good health, and has sufficient provision for the day, it is as if he has all the treasures of the world at his disposal without him realizing it. And therefore the Rasul warned us about many dimensions لا تزول قدم عبد حتى يسأل عن عمري في ما أفنى وعن جسمي في ما بلا وعن مال about your wealth about your youth about your life about your knowledge among the things Allah will ask you عن جسدي في ما بلا your body how you used it or abused it and therefore we are told in numerous ahadith اغتنم خمسة قبل خمسة value five things in life before five things come to pass among them وصحتك قبل سقمك value your health before ill health or sickness touches you. And therefore the Rasul in the hadith documented by Imam Al-Tirmidhi said, فَإِنْ أَحَدًا لَمْ يُعْطِ بَعْدَ الْيَقِينَ خَيْرًا مِنَ الْعَافِيَةِ He said, other than the certainty of faith, other than the certainty of faith, no blessing is better for you than your health. So, focus on our well-being. Because if we are incapacitated, there's little we can do for others. Pay attention to the mind. Because like our bodies, our minds need to be exercised, stretched, strengthened through continual learning. That's why we learn, not necessarily in schools or in classes or universities, or even we can learn lessons of life from the cradle to the grave. Continual learning, reflect, introspect, keep getting smarter and wiser by keeping ourselves well informed, learning from our mistakes and empowering ourselves. Nurture the heart. <coughs> Because Allah looks at the heart. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ سُورِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَاكِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ The heart and the deeds that emanates from that heart. We need to understand and satisfy as best we can our emotional needs, our need for love, for friendship, for belonging, for fun. But we must also cope with negative emotions like anger, like jealousy, like frustration, fear, and loneliness. We are therefore instructed to keep our emotions in check. We are instructed to keep our attitudes good and to keep our thoughts pure. But we, over and above that, we also need to acknowledge our spiritual needs. From an ethical and moral perspective, we should contemplate the higher purpose and the deeper meaning of our lives and try to live meaningfully. Spirituality lies both internally and externally in how we engage ourselves in our inner being and the realities, the greater realities of life and our eventual accountability. And therefore we say spirituality internally refers to the purification of the self from the evils of bad intention, of deceit, of hypocrisy, of selfishness, of cowardice, of arrogance and of prejudice. And outwardly spirituality becomes manifested in our attitude and behavior and in character. In focusing on the neglected dimensions of ourselves, there are dimensions of ourselves which we neglect. In focusing on the neglected dimensions of ourselves, we could enhance our very humanity and be revived in a most positive way, inshallah, as the Quran promises. Allah says, Man amila saliham min dhakrin aw untha wa huwa mu'min, fada nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba, wada najaziyannahum ajarahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'maloom. As for any person, male or female, who does righteous deeds and has faith, such shall be most certainly caused to live a goodly life. And most certainly we shall grant such people their rewards in accordance with the best of their efforts. So may we be of those who are sound in mind and body and heart and in spirit. <coughs> because everything we have is an amana or a trust. And for each thing, we will be held accountable. But a positive attitude 
And a positive personality, sorry, requires five important attitudes. The first attitude is the attitude towards ourselves. You know, they say love for others what you love for yourself. Very beautiful. What if you hate yourself, then what? It begins with that. So it's not the highest attitude, but the most important one in relation to us as social beings. So remember that our attitude towards ourselves affects all other attitudes. Self-respect, therefore, is the forerunner of all respect. For the one who does not respect himself or herself cannot respect other people. So self-respect is the forerunner of all respect and of self-esteem. And self-esteem is so essential for a positive personality. Second attitude is attitude towards our Creator. Our attitude towards faith affects our relationship with our Creator and also at the same time with determines the principles by which we live with the world around us. In other words, our attitude towards our Creator determines how we view our responsibility towards the creation of that Creator. Then attitude towards time, this indicates our value of the capital of life, because time is life. If you waste your time, you waste your life. You waste your life, you waste your time. <coughs> and attitude towards the future. Our attitude towards the future influences our mindset towards the rest of life. So many people, so many young people are negative about the future. Do not let negative attitudes prevent us from the possibility of engaging in positive action. Do not let negative attitudes prevent us from the possibility of engaging in positive actions. If we are cognizant of the fact that the attitudes indicate our approach to daily living, we will realize how damaging negative attitudes are to our sense of well-being. Realize that attitudes are reflections of ourselves in the mirror of life. Your attitude, some people have a negative attitude. You see them, there's this negative vibe. Realize that attitudes are in reality reflections of ourselves in the mirror of life. And the attitudes we harbor makes us the way we are, makes us act the way we act, and may cause us to be treated the way we are treated. A positive attitude always impacts the world around it. I always mention the story of Isa, Jesus peace be upon him, when he was passing by a group of people who were insulting him and he prayed for them. And one of the, his companions said, oh, oh messenger of Allah, they are cursing you, you are praying for them. And he said, yeah, fi qalbi, wa ma indi fi qalbi. They give what they have in the heart, I give what I have in mind. The lesson we learn from this is never to let even the negativity of others prevent us from being positive because being positive about life is among the greatest motivators for living and for doing good. Be optimistic for pessimism is not part of our faith. Rasul said, pessimism is bad character. So, life is short. What we have is only temporary and our lives must end and all our possessions will eventually pass on to others. Our hopes and our plans will fade and our abilities and our days will be reduced. Eventually, neither our color nor our gender, neither our language nor our position will matter. What will matter is not so much what we studied, but what we learned. Not, what we, what, not who we knew, but for what we will be remembered and known. Not what we, rem what we memorized, but for what we will be remembered. Not by how we traveled, but where we went. Not how much we had, but for what it was spent. Not what we got, but what we gave. Not what we professed, but how we lived. And not how long we lived, but how much good we did. We can only have a better world if we have improved individuals. And we can only have better individuals if each of us makes a concerted effort and a commitment to improve ourselves. If we take care of our per personal infrastructure, our mind, our heart, our body, and our soul, keep our attitudes Good. We improve our lives and enhance our potential to have a positive impact on the world around us. Sayyidina Ali Karamallah Wajha said, Khalutun nas mukhalatan in muttum baku alaykum wa in ishtum hanu ilaykum. Socialize and live with society in such a way, live among people in such a way that when you die, they mourn for you, they genuinely miss you. And when you are alive, they desire to be with you in your company. You see, the reality that living is temporary, <coughs> that life 
cannot be too long. And the possibility that life may be shorter than anticipated. All of this should motivate each and every one of us to do what needs to be done as well as we can do it as soon as possible to the best of our ability. We have the duty of recognizing our collective responsibility of transforming an ailing world by doing good. And as the Rasul instructed, Kul muhsina, being an instrument of goodness, be of good yourself and be of benefit. None of us have an excuse and each one of us has the capacity for manifesting some degree of goodness. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, documented both in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, An-Nasu Ma'adin. Human beings are minds of treasure, not minds of gold mines and mines of diamonds and so on. Human beings, An-Nasu Ma'adin, humans are minds of treasure. And Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi, uh, Rumi says in his Mathnawiya Ma'anawi, he said, Ma'adana sabras tan, Ma'adana shukras dil, Ma'adana khandas shush, Ma'adana rahmat jigar. He says in Persian, the body is a mine of endurance, the heart is a mine of gratitude, the bosom is a mine of joy, and the liver is a heart of love and compassion. So we need to engage the world and apply our faith. Apply it with an open mind and a caring heart. And of course, a firm determination and a positive resolve. And in that way, we can remove prejudice with understanding, supplant war with peace, displace darkness through light, overcome evil with good, replace misery with hope, and supersede hatred with love. Allah Iqbal exhorts us in numerous quwwata ishq se har basta kubala kar de deir me isme Muhammad se ujala kar de Lighten up every part of the world with the light of love. So in a world seemingly beset with pessimism, with skepticism, with negativity, we should heed the advice of Rumi again when he said, Ba gosh dadan be tahmil gosh kun, ba chism hai rahmat niga kun, ba zuban ishq sohbat kun. Listen with the ears of tolerance, see through the eyes of compassion, and speak with the language of love. Let all our decisions be character driven. Because if we are character driven, we are inspired by positivity rather than bogged down by negativity. If we are character driven, we are motivated by commitment, not only by convenience. If we are character driven, we are encouraged by the common good, not only by personal gain. If we are character driven, we make decisions based on principle, not on expediency. If we are character driven, we continue when challenges and problems arise rather than quit. If we are character driven, we appreciate what is right and enjoy enjoining what is good. We ask Allah and I conclude with the words of the Prophet. A prayer of the Prophet and I leave you with a prayer for all of us. He said, Allahumma ja'alna min al-ladheena Allah make us of those idha ahsanu istabsharu wa idha asawu istaghfiru wa idha u'tu shakaru wa idha abtulu sabaru wa idha ghadibu ghafaru. The Rasul said, oh Allah, make us of those who are cheerful and happy when they do good. Don't do good to feel good Feel good doing good. There's a difference between the two. If I go once a year and give some poor people some bread, I feel so good, mashallah, I'm so generous. Wrong thing. Feel good. But don't do a little good and say, I'm so good. Feel good doing the good. Don't do good to feel good. So in other words, do as you do it, find joy in doing it. So if nobody recognizes it, it doesn't matter. As the Rasul says in the Quran, as prophets say, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا We help you for the cause of Allah. We don't expect any things, nor do we desire any reward. You say, thank you, it's a bonus. If you give a reward, okay. If you don't acknowledge it, it's also all right. Because why? I found joy in doing what is right. So those, Rasulullah made a dua, Allahumma ja'alna min al-ladheena idha ahsanu istabsharu, wa idha asawu istaghfaru, wa idha u'tu shakaru, wa idha batulu sabaru, wa idha ghadibu ghafaru. Make it of those, O Allah, who are cheerful when we do good, who are repentant when we make mistakes, who are grateful when we receive, who show patience when we are in difficulty, and who have the capacity to pardon even when we are angry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate us on this auspicious day moment of Jum'ah. We ask him to enhance our, uh, our well-being and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put love and affection in our hearts and make us instruments of goodness as the Rasul said, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِ الْخَيْرَةِ فَقَوْ فِي الدِّينِ وَبَسَّرَهُ عُيُوبَهُ 
If Allah wishes well for you, He grants you three things. Understanding of your faith. He grants you the capacity to see your own shortcomings. And He grants you to be an instrument of benefit to the world around you.